be aware to understand what is going on. Okay, very good morning, Astochi. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Please. And the other officers of the department who are participating in this seminar and meeting. The representative and deputy director from the various RSS. Uh, Indian Institute of Legal Metrology and other countries and other organizations, including National Physical Laboratory. You know the importance of uh, legal metrology. Before that, uh, legal metrology, it was weights and measures. And uh, BIPM was in pictures, so originally name deriving from the BIPM Bureau Despite Eight Measures. Means despite eight measures means weights and measures. It was not legal metrology. Later on, day by day, some framework were made by OIML committee that is called CIML. So International Committee of Legal Metrology and that committee made some uh, references and those were adopted by various countries and when we, it was adopted by various country then they frame as a part of their rules and regulations. And when it was framed as a part of rules and regulations, then it become very important. If you see, uh, see the constitution of India, so there is a union list and con concurrent list. Still, uh, there is a uh, matter of the weights and measure, and there is no legal metrology. So, legal metrology was derived from weights and measure, and it came from the CIML. And when it was adopted in other countries earlier, you see that our act. 76 and 85 Act. Those were also on the name of Weights and Measure, Standards of Weights and Measure Act 1976 and Standards of Weights and Measure Enforcement Act 1985. So, on the recommendation of Parliamentary Standing Committee, these two Act were merged together. And it was given some name that it is, it will be, that was the legal metrology bill. And when it was adopted, then become its act. And in act, I think there are the more than 51 section, 53 section, I think. 53 section. Uh, and there the different provision of the state government, central government has been given. And the units of weights and measure also has been defined. You see that the legal metrology and in the legal metrology act, there is a weights and measure. That is the units of weights and measure, a SI system of units. So that is also the weights and measure. And when it is a high system of weights and measure units are derived for implementations, then it comes as a part of the legal methodology. And there also one section, there is provision of Pre-packaged commodities, only one section. Other are the penalties and other different sections. 
but the from section 18 from where this our packaged county rules has been framed so what it says in the section same has been reflected in the rules and we are adding and subtracting that is under the uh, power of ministry and department and there the fine will be not that much what are the most punishment provisions are there so that is for the violation of section 18 which is given in section 36 so if you are uh, amending day by day and which is not reflected in section 18 so there is a provision in the rule making power that department can frame this type of things additive things and subtractive things which is related with legal metrology and weights and measure not beyond that so if it is related with weights and measure and legal metrology that the punishment provision is only 5000 rupees i think that astos agarwal is well versed and he is knowing lot of the high court cases are there their inspectors are knowingly booking the cases of uh, 25,000, 1 lakh rupees management and all these type of things. But uh, various steps the court has not accepted those very things. Only warning and 5,000 fines were given. So, where the 5,000 fines are there, it is not necessary that you take all the 5,000 rupees. That is the maximum amount. And for violation of section 28 also, uh, whatever the first uh, 25,000, 50,000, and up to 1 lakh rupees, all these things are there. So these are the maximum uh, penalties. And for those very penalties, we have not the made the prescribed the rules for the violation of such and such things such much penalties will be there sir. so that is some laguna in our rules or state government rules they have not prescribed that very thing now these rules are very much uh, clear anywhere you go under any law so everything has been defined in the tabular form for what much, how much will be the punishment. Okay. It is uh, like the calibration chart. So in RSL, the calibration chart has been given and sometimes it has been reviewed based on the revenue that we have to increase the revenue. So the calibration charges will be increased. So uh, these things are based uh, made like that. So most important thing in the weights and measure is that correct measurement of the uh, net quantity, whether it is by weights and measure whether it is in pre-packaged county and in pre-packaged county also it is measured by standard weight and measure only that's the reason the net quantity has been prescribed and that net quantity is prescribed by standard weight and measure and what is the standard weight and measure which has been adopted in our country why the large you cannot say that any weight and measure which is adopted in other countries that is standard weight and measure it is not like that the standard weight and measures are only those weights and measures 
विच इज प्रेस्क्राइब अमन लीगल मेट्रोलॉजी एक्ट एंड रूल्स नेशनल स्टैंडर्ड रूल्स जो है सो दैट मच थिंग्स आर बींग देयर जो है इन नेशनल स्टैंडर्ड रूल्स ऑल्सो यू सी इट हैज नॉट बीन टच फ्रॉम वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम तो नेशनल स्टैंडर्ड रूल्स आर एज इट इज आर वेरी माइनरली amended it is the requirement to review the national standards rules also when you are amending the general rules uh, and the packaged community rules so national standards rules are also very very important that's also required the amend i think that the people who are in this very meeting you can take the view if the some state government some senior officers are also present you can take their views also that how they are doing in the state government for the enforcement purpose and what is their opinions and you are in ministry at present in charge of director legal methodology so what are the current practices you may describe very well you might be having slide also you can make the presentations also with these very words i thanks everybody for the success of meeting thank you thank you very much sir thank you for a nice and motivating words certainly sir we are trying our best to bring this legal methodology at uh, the best level in india at at the end at the international level sir uh, we have a small presentation on this uh, legal methodology act and rules which i am just going to share with everybody and after this uh, presentation i'll share it in the group whatsapp groups and uh, we will also forward it uh, put it in the social media platforms so that this can be benefited for by anybody who so wish to get it done as uh, uh, director sir has already explained in a uh, better way what we are doing and what are the requirements i would let's just put a small light on the requirements of the legal methodology this is the whole consumer which is in focus of the department of consumer affairs and the legal methodology is at this part where we are working on in this quantity assurance quality is looked after by pis consumer protection by consumer protection act under the consumer protection act and consumer protection central consumer protection authority ccpa price monitoring is being done regularly and uh, we are the only department which regularly monitors the prices at the retail retail market as well as in the wholesale market so when we talk about the legal methodology as we are all aware it is the application of, of legal requirements to measurements and measuring instruments whatsoever the measurements we are doing or measuring instruments we are using this application of legal requirements is called the legal methodology as far as methodology is concerned we are all aware methodology means measurement when we are doing some measurement for example this water bottle is of let's say 500 ml that 500 ml is the measurement but when it is under the legal requirements that means if somebody gives the assurance guarantee that it is 500 ml then it becomes the legal methodology and this is the purpose of the department of legal methodology or the legal methodology officers to ensure that the declaration of the quantity should be correct the purpose of the legal methodology is to ensure public guarantee from the point of view of security and accuracy of weighments and measurements we are doing the weighing as well as we are doing the measuring weighment what is the difference between weighing and measuring actually if we just go through it weighing is something we are just finding the force thrust which is placed which is put on the on the quantity of matter that is mass but through the gravity that is the weight and measuring when we are actually uh, comparing something with the predetermined quantity for example meter liter that are the measurements and weighing is like in kg is the weighment to build confidence 
in trade, industry and consumer and to create harmonious environment for conducting business. The purpose of the legal methodology is to ensure that the consumer should get the correct quantity, but at the same time, it has to ensure that the transactions between B2B are also correct. For example, the petrol or the oil given by the oil companies to the retail dealers or something which the manufacturer gives to the retail dealer is also correct. That, that creates a harmonious environment for conducting business. At the same time, it also stops any type of or prevent any type of uh, uh, wrong, wrongdoing, providing less material or short delivery, etc. As uh, the Dikshisar has explained in a very better manner that this legal methodology is not a new subject. It has started its uh, traces from Indus Valley civilization. We are all aware that the traces of weights and measures or the legal methodology are available at that time. If we see the bricks, the size of the bricks is 3 is to 2 is to 1. The size, what was this in meter, inch or centimeter, whatsoever it was, but it was in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. So that means they were also aware about the measurement part. Later on, when we come after that, the Chandragupta or at the time of Kautilya, it was also necessary or the mandatory to get verified every weight and measure after every six months and not doing that was a crime. And at the time it was to be taken very seriously by the rulers of that time. Then we come the British Mughal period, Mughals were also having the gadgets, the Tola, Masha, etc. And then we have the British, British were also using four pound a second, even till now, when a child takes birth, we used to call that how much is the weight of the child. It is this much pound and ounce. So this is a unit, you know, this is very, uh, you know, practical units, which the people used to have in different, different corners of the country, not the standard units, but still, you know, popular common units, which people used to use. However, it is not allowed as per the law. Law says that we should have only the SI system of units so that there should be uniformity and the new generation does not understand what is the meaning of foot, what is the meaning of inch, how it will be converted into meter and centimeter because they are all aware about the MKS system or the SI system of units. So this Legal Metrology Act ensures that all type of units should be the standard system of units. Then after the British, we were having the first constitution and so sorry, the constitution of India. And during this constitution of India, the first in 1956, it was decided that we should have a uniform system of weighing and measuring in the country. And the, the traces of these weights and measures were made under the union list and at that time under the state list. The establishment of standards of weights and measures to frame policy, rules, etc., was the responsibility of the Union of India by the of the central government and the enforcement of weights and measures, except establishment of standards, that is enforcement, that was the responsibility at that time under entry 29 of the state list, that was the responsibility of the state government. In 1976, when the biggest amendment in the, in the constitution of India was made, at the time, this subject of enforcement was brought under the concurrent list. Now, the res it is the responsibility of the center as well as the state government to enforce the provisions of the Legal Metrology Act or the Western Measures so that there, there, is a res there is a uniformity in the whole country of weights and measures. As we are all aware, the Legal Metrology Act came into force from 1st of April 2011 and after repealing the Standards of Weights and Measures Act 1976 and the Standards of Weights and Measures Act, the Enforcement Act 1985. If, if we see the whole, the old Acts, 76 Act and the 85 Acts, these were the beautifully drafted Acts, very good, very beautifully drafted, but now this Legal Metrology Act 2009. It is also having a very beauty in it. It is a very, having only 57 sections which are covering the whole standard of measures Act 76 and 1985 Act. Being a very small act, it is just a skeleton. The rest of the part is covered under the rules framed under this Act, the Legal Metrology Act. But the objective of the Act of the of this enactment is to establish and enforce standards of weights and measures 
Standards means the units of weights and measures that will be kg, meter, liter, centimeter, like that, and the seconds. This is one part. Secondly, how a weighing and measuring instrument will perform, how it will be, how it will be constructed, how it will be manufactured, how it will be tested, or how it will be verified. All these are covered under the standards of weights and measures. It regulates all type of trade commerce in weights and measures and other goods which are sold either by weight, measure or number. Generally, the transactions all over the world used to take place by three means, weight, measure or number. So, this Legal Metrology Act covers all type of transactions which took place through this, uh, these three ways. Under this Department of Consumer Affairs, this Legal Metrology Act is being uh, performed or is being maintained. It's within the Department of Consumer Affairs, is the nodal agency for the implementation of the Legal Metrology Act. If you talk about the rules, because the Act is having only 57 sections, very small Act, the, there are different different rules which have been framed under the Act. Dikshi Sir just has just explained about the rules. I am just going to uh, just uh, again discuss few of the rules. What are the purpose of these rules? The first is a general rules. We call it a general rule, but it is not general. I think it is the most in general rule. It is very important, which covers all type of weighing and measuring instruments, how the testing of a weighing and measuring instrument will be done, how it will be constructed or manufactured, how it will be verified and stamped, when it will be verified and stamped. So, all these process of all type of weighing and measuring instruments are covered under this legal metrology general rules 2011. This is the most important legal metrology general rules 2011. You, you, you will be surprised to know India being an IML member country used to have or used to utilize the recommendations made by the International Organization of Legal Metallurgy. All type of weighing and measuring instruments which are covered under these general rules are based upon the OML recommendations. Apart from, except few of the amendments or few of the changes which we make as per our Indian requirements. Otherwise, rest of the things are, okay, rest of the things are exactly as per the international standards, but it covers all type of weighing instruments, maybe a non-automatic weighing instruments, maybe a weighing machine used at the shop, maybe a dispensing unit, petrol pump, diesel, CNG, LPG, LNG, hydrogen, anything. And so all these type of uh, weighing and measuring instruments are covered under this general rule. The next is we have the packaged commodities rules. Packaged commodities rules are also very important. And I think this is the one of the best rule of the for the package commodities which has been framed by the legal metrology in india and you know whenever we are compare the legal metrology uh, status or the legal metrology structure organization implementation enforcement laws with the other counterparts in the world we found that the legal metrology in india has very good provisions under the act and due to which being 140 crores of the country we are not having large number of problems in the implementation of act as well as we are we, we have very few officers in the states who are actually implementing the legal metrology act even after it the implementation and the enforcement is very good we don't find that very uh, apart from our uh, except few of the cases otherwise at all the places this act is implemented in a very well manner this is only due to the due to the best framing of the legal metrology rules and the act the, the very good one, very good point about the package commodities rules is the declaration of MRP, maximum retail price, which talks that it will be inclusive of all taxes. Maximum retail price, inclusive of all taxes. This is one of the, you know, one of the wonder, we call it in the legal methodology when we talk at the international level, it is wonder because the MRP in our country is decided by the manufacturer or the importer or the packer, not by the shopkeeper or the retailer as it is prevailing in other our other counterparts or in other international countries, in international bodies or other European or the US wherever possible. Then uh, in the package commodity rules, we also have the provision of net content checking, how to check the net content in a package commodity. This net content checking generally used to be done at the premises of the manufacturer or the packer or the importer because it is difficult to check the net content at the retail. So, this is very important, one of the most important 
rule, which is packaged commodities rules. The legal methodology approval of models rules 2011 in India, not only in India, this is the structure all over the world that legal methodology has a provision whenever any weighing or measuring instrument is manufactured or imported in the country, it has to get approved from the uh, from the authorities of legal methodology in that country. In India, we used to organize we used to organize uh, this, uh, we, we used to do uh, the approval of model as per the best practices as we have in our country. We have the complete set of rules for the approval of models. Yes, it is somebody has just asked to what is the best way to declare a net quantity or the net weight. See, the point is we have to declare the value of net quantity or the net weight. Nowhere in the rules it is, well, it is, it is mandatory to declare net quantity or net weight. We have to declare the value. For example, the quantity is 500 ml. So 500 ml, the font size or all rules are applicable on the 500 ml, not on the net quantity or the net, net weight. You declare it net quantity because you cannot declare it net weight because it is in volume. So you can, for a being for a commodity, which is a solid commodity, you can declare net weight or net quantity. It both both are okay. Net weight, net quantity. Both ways are okay. We have already issued an advisory uh, recently about few months back that either you are declaring net quantity or net weight, both are okay. There is no problem to, uh, to use any of them. Somebody has asked the question, I am replying for that. Then, as uh, the Dikshi sir was saying about the national standards rules, yes, sir, it is very good rule. And I'm telling you, we have not amended. We have not amended this national uh, standard rule since long. It was last amended in 2019 when the at internationally we adopted when we adopted internationally about these new system of units for mass. For example, the mass which was placed at Paris has been changed into the uh, artifact from this artifact to the universal constant, which is the uh, which is the Planck constant. Similarly, other units of uh, this SI system, seven base units of SI system has been changed from 2019. We amended at that time and we put the latest definition. We also advise the NCRT as well as other, uh, as well as the education ministry amend the, the definitions of all these SI system, basic SI system of units as per the international standards. I think that has already been done. But apart from that, if we see now earlier we were having like million, billion, trillion, and we in terms of units, we talk call it 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 6, 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power 12, 10 to the power 15. Now we have gone up to 10 to the power 27 and 10 to the power 30. This is not included in these rules and certainly we can amend wherever required, wherever possible, we will do that. But this national standard rule cover all type of scientific units, all type of scientific values. Sir has very well explained that this is the most important rule, national standard rule, how a weighing and measuring instrument has to be manufactured or has to be tested, has to be prepared, prepared. All these are covered or how will be verified that is covered under the national standard rules. So it is very important. The next is 2 kg means 2 kg only. We will mention it very clearly. 2 kg, uh, nobody asked that 2 into 1 kg. It is if the net quantity is 2 kg, we will simply mention 2 kg. Somebody asked this question. The legal methodology we will take in the, at the end of the uh, workshop. The legal methodology numeration rules. This is again a very important rule. How to represent a number in Indian system? We represent decimal after the decimal, we put two zeros, and before the decimal, we used to put first three zeros and then in terms of two zeros, two zeros, two zeros. So this is the way how we put it in the numeration. But this numeration is again very important because for the banking purpose, because for the transition purpose, our declaration on the package community, it is a very good rule. We have a trading institute at Rachi and the complete set of rules for Indian Institute of Legal Metallurgy Rachi is there. It is one of the best institute in Asia, which is not not only providing the training to the legal metallurgy officers of the state government, but as well as industries, petroleum industry, package commodity industry, VCOs, voluntary consumer organizations, and the consumer forums. So it is a, it is providing the training to all type of sectors we are required in the field of legal metallurgy. And we have not only in, in not only for Indians, but also from the other counterparts. My other counterparts who are available in this workshop, they can also uh, write to us for organizing a training program, physical training program at Indian Institute of Legal Metallurgy, Rachi, through their through the unit or through their Ministry of External Affairs, that can be considered. We used to organize the training programs for the international participants. It is one of the best institutes. We have institute. We have very good faculty over there who are trained, who have all type of testing training facilities, 
equipments, residential facilities, putting and everything is available. It is, a, it is in, in a very good, about 17 acre of land in Rachi at a very good place. And one another very important rule is that government approved test center rules. We have decided when this act was framed that few of the wing and imaging instruments for which the facility is not available at the state level or at the with the government, we can we can give this equipment to the private laboratories or the private persons who can verify on behalf of the government that has been made and the regional reference standards laboratories of the government of India have been recognized under these government approved test centers. However, the private laboratories could not be recognized due to various regions and we are requesting to the state governments to require, to frame their rules and recognize the private laboratories because the verification work is done by the state governments at the local level and at the center level it is not very easy to uh, very, very easy to monitor on regular basis as is being done by the state governments because at the central level we are having very few offices at a few, very few places five six places in the country so it is difficult to control the to or to monitor the whole all the GATCs, government approved center but the state governments are monitoring or framing it. The state governments have also framed their own enforcement rules. These and under these enforcement rules, they provide or they ensure that the quantity delivered to the consumer is correct and or the delivered to the B2B is correct. This is a very important rule of frame of rules or the or the rules which actually implement or enforce the legal methodology in the country. These are framed by the state governments because under the Legal Methodology Act, the powers have been given to the center as well as the state governments to frame the legal rules under the Legal Methodology Act 2009. If we talk about the standardization of units of measures, measures, as we are all aware, all our metric system or the SI system, mass is in crazy, length is in meter, time is in second, etc. So all these units we are using under the legal methodology. And as I have already told you that all these units are now converted from artifact to the natural constants. For example, mass is now converted or connected with the Planck's constant H. Length is connected with the speed of light. Time is connected with the cesium atom frequency. How the cesium is in the uh, superficial or transition state. How much frequency it takes. In the, uh, as we are all aware, it is nine crore one ninety two black seven 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 six thirty one thousand seven seventy times of the atom of the cesium vibrates in one second. Similarly, temperature is Boltzmann constant, dominant intensity, and amount of substance etc. Boltzmann constant and all this. As Sir has already told, these are we have the few of the declarations on the prepackaged commodities we will discuss. Verification of its images we have already discussed. This legal methodology act is applicable to all type of trade and transactions to provide assurance of quantity, applicable to all type of wing and imaging instruments. To any type of wing and imaging instruments, we have already framed that for the transition of solid commodities, it will be in kg, for the liquid commodities in liter, etc. This is some of the new things which we have done. We have introduced unit sale price. The concept of unit sale price is in, in place of declare, sorry, with the declaration of MRP, maximum retail price, we have to declare the unit sale price because what was happening that uh, now the with the open market and with the uh, with this uh, you know globalization of all the transactions, we are finding that the packaged commodities we are getting, which are not uh, in terms of standard quantities or prescribed for standard quantities, for example, 50 gram, 100 gram, 200 gram, 500 gram, like that. They may be 48 gram, 46 gram, 198 uh, gram, or 950 gram, 962 grams, like that. So it was very difficult to compare the, the prices of a commodity by the consumer. The legal methodology has framed, has made a policy that when you are declaring the MRP maximum retail price in terms of with the into with the inclusive with the inclusion of all taxes you we have to declare or the manufacturer packer or importer has to declare the unit sale price for example less than one kg it will be in one gram above one kg it will be in one kg one liter one meter like that so this is the way how the concept of unit sale price was introduced but it is not the actual finding of the unit sale price it is just the mathematical calculation for example the price of 100 gram is let's say 200 rupees then the price per gram is 2 rupees like that simple way this is just the mathematical calculation the, the amount divided by the quantity and we will get the amount per gram or per ml Declaration of month and year of manufacture is also very important. Earlier, we used to, we have uh, under the legal methodology, 
rules, packaged commodity rules, it was allowed to declare either the month and year of manufacture or back or import. But now from 1st of January 2024, we have to declare only the month and year of manufacture. One director or the company or other person can be nominated for the offices of the company. And in case of any offense, only that particular director or the person will be responsible or the directors will not be responsible. We have given a provision for the uh, for the electronic codex to declare few of the declarations, few of the information through the uh, on the package commodity uh, through the QR codes. Earlier or even uh, for other products, all the declarations have to be made in the end on the have to be declared on the package commodity itself. But for electronic products, few of the declarations can be given through the QR code. Waste of measures which are used by the industries, they do not need to, to be required to be re verified again and again if they are not impacting any or they are not used for any transaction or protection. This to adopt a uniform procedure throughout the country to our double stamping of same weight and measure, the provision has been made. Now we have also decriminalized few sections of the act which were not impacting directly to the consumer or the economy of the country. Under this legal methodology, we are also working on one another very important project, which is the dissemination of Indian Standard Time. At present, we are having the time disseminated by the uh, through the GPS, and we are having all GPS servers available everywhere. Very soon, India will be having or will be distributing or disseminating its own Indian Standard Time through its own system through the regional reference standards laboratories and we are expecting that this first phase will be completed by 31st of March. As we are all legal methodology you know, throughout the world are the member of the OML International Organization of Legal Methodology. It was established in 1955. We, India, became its member in 1956. See, the 1956 was the year when India became its member of OML, as well as India signed the Beta Convention and obtained the prototype, national prototype of mass that is one. In 1 kg in terms of IPK 56. So this, this type of things we are having since 1956. In, the Indian, in India signed the Meta Convention as well as at the same time signed or the became the member of OML, CBIPM, etc. The purpose of the OML is to harmonize the legal methodology at the national and the international level. Regulations, national laws should be comparable, should be at par with the international. And you will be surprised to know that all type of testing which we are doing in India is exactly as per the international standards. Wherever the testing is done in India, whether the testing is done in US, whether the testing is in Germany or Europe, anywhere in the world, the testing is the same, format is the same, report is the same because all are as per OIML recommendations. So that's why it is very good. It is a very good uh, example of harmonization, how the internationally we are harmonized with each other because the reports are same. The report prepared by any country in the world can easily be understood by the other country. Even the report I am obtaining from PTB Germany, I can see it and see and understand what does it mean because it is the same process, same formula, same format as we are using in India. Obviously, it will facilitate international commerce of measuring instrument and affected products. It will ensure quality measurements for public and worker health and safety and protection of environment. It harmonizes national procedures for testing and verifying the performance of the equipment. This is one of uh, one of the very important achievement of the legal methodology. We have started under the great leadership of our honorable Shri B. N. D. Shri Saab when we tried to become the OML member. In the at the international level, and now we have been uh, the international. We have we are now the body or the Indian legal methodology is authorized is approved by the OML to issue the OML approval certificates. And the it is uh, by this uh, obtaining this OML certification, certainly we can help our manufacturers to send to to sell their products all over the world. Secondly, we are also obtaining the request from other corners of the country, other corners of the world to approve their weighing and measuring instruments in India. We have already started and very soon we will be having, I think that we will be having our weighing and measuring instruments which are manufactured in India are, F, are of the international standard. India is now the 13th country in the world which can issue the OML pattern approval certificates to reduce the redundancy and saving the resources.
If we talk about this legal methodology, it has economic essential. It is essential for economic activities, especially in this area of uh, era of globalization. It it fosters mutual trust among countries, economies, and consumers and trade. It also supports the cross border or internationally harmonized legal methodology requirements. If we talk, there are a large number of weighing and measuring instruments which are available in this uh, legal methodology system. As we are all aware, it may be the radar speed measuring instrument, it may be breath analyzer, it may be ship tanks found at ports, it may be moisture meter, crane scale, petrol, diesel, etc. So, large number of weighing and measuring instruments or all type of weighing and measuring instruments, all type of weighing and measuring instruments which are used for transition and protection are covered under the legal methodology as per the recent recommendations made by legal methodology available on the OIML website. These are the few advantages which we are already aware of that. These are the new technologies which we have to brought under the legal methodology system in India. It may be the electric vehicle charging, how to test the charging capacity, whether it is giving the correct charging or not, because it is like we are getting the petrol or the diesel, because whether the charging is being actually done or not, we have to check hydrogen cars, LNG trucks, we have gas meters, energy meters, moisture meter, sound level meters, all these equipments have to be added under the system in legal metrology in India and we are working on it very soon. Maybe within a year we will be testing all the equipments, we will be having the facility of testing of all these equipments and approving it as per the requirement. As I have, we have already discussed earlier, this was a platinum iridium a plate, a platinum iridium a piece of uh, metal which was placed at Paris and this was uh, called as the international standard of 1 kg. All national metrology institutions like in India, National Physical Laboratory, which has the national prototype used to send their mass to the international standard at Paris. They used to verify their mass or our mass that how much is the variation from the international standard and accordingly we used to correct our measurements in India. This national prototype used to be sent to international prototype after every 10 years. Then we have the reference standards. They use these reference standards are maintained at all regional reference standards laboratories uh, established by the Union of India. The wing and the weights or the mass which are kept at reference standards are verified once in three years from national physical laboratory. They used to send their masses to the National Physical Laboratory. Then we have second and the working standard laboratories available at the state governments. Uh, second standards, few laboratories in, in uh, at the state headquarters and working standard laboratories are available everywhere in every district, every taluka of the state government. And then we have the commercial weights. So this is a traceability chart, how, chart how a commercial weight is linked with the international standard through this hierarchy of the weights and measures. And these, these all being and measure with the, all these masses, all these weights are get all, uh, traceable to the international standard with their uh, allowable tolerance, with their maximum permissible error as per the requirement. Obviously, the national prototype has the best then the commercial bits and measures has the least accuracy or least uh, tolerance. Mandatory compliances for bits and measures. It is very important because whenever I don't know why the people don't understand this is the requirement of the law and everywhere it is the same. It is not like that, that India is only putting the pressure or the for the importers or the manufacturers like that. Everywhere we used to comply the same provisions of law. For example, for registration of importer of weight or measure, we used to comply section 19. That means the registration has to be done at the director of the legal metrology and but it is done on the basis of the recommendation made by the state governments and all this process at the central level online. We don't accept any hard copy of any application. We don't accept everything has to be applied through the all through the online portal. However, if something is required, we used to ask to add or to attach other document if required. Otherwise, generally used to, used to be done. Every person before manufacturing or importing any weight or measure has to get the approval of model under section 22 of the Union of India. And again, it is online process. The application has to be submitted. If it is an on, it is an OML approved machine, approved equipment, then there is no need. Uh, there is generally we used to approve on the basis of the OML approval. Otherwise, if it is not like that, then we used to go for the uh, approval of approval on the basis of the uh, on the basis of this uh, testing. No person can manufacture sell or repair any being and magic instrument if he does not have the license from the controller. Controllers of the state governments, legal metallurgy controllers used to issue the licenses after obtaining the license, which is also very online process. 
application applicant can get all the licenses and can start working there's not a big issue so next is the whenever you are using or selling any being and instrument it has to be verified if it is used in any transaction or protection these are the two words which have been made over here transition or protection any being or magic instrument which is going to be used for any transition or protection it has to be verified and stamped and it is also very difficult to finalize where the equipment is going to be used so generally we used to say that all type of and magic instruments before sale has to be verified and stamped at least once it has to be verified and stamped because whenever I many times I used to visit the industries and I observed that the wing and measuring instruments used over there are neither calibrated nor verified nothing is going to be happen I have seen at one of the very good chemical laboratory chemical factory sorry at this chemical factory I could not find a single weighing machine there were thousands maybe 50 20 or 30 weighing machines available at the time I could not find a single weighing machine where they can say that it is correct otherwise the error was in kgs not in grams it was in kgs so it you know it pinches a lot that why it is not calibrated why it is not verified so it has to be verified or stamped or calibrated somewhere so that it can be it, sh it should give you the correct results otherwise tomorrow there is a problem there are the few offenses which used to take place say, under this legal metallurgy act i'm not taking all the actions i'm just uh, discussing those sections which are related with the weighing and measuring instruments like uh, section 13 selling any article or good in the less quantity or short delivery failure to get model approval selling distribution use of unverified weight measure non-registration manufacture without license repairer or sale without license so these are the few sections in which in all the sections the first offense has the compounding provision under the legal pathology act most the beautiful of this act the beauty of this act is it has a provision of appeal suppose <clears throat> an officer issues a notice legal notice to any of the industry any of the uh, trader or any of the business the business can represent to the controller or the director of the legal metrology or make an appeal to both of them and if he is also not satisfied with the decision or the take uh, or the order issued by the director or the controller he can appeal to the state government or the central government as the case may be so there is a provision of appeal this is first point second is the provision of compounding the offense can be compounded at the level at the at the department level itself there is no need to go to the court of law however this is in the first case for the second case in most of the cases if the offense is uh, severe the provision of imprisonment is also made the imprisonment can be made it can be decided or can be uh, pronounced by the honorable by the competent court of law not by the legal metallurgy officer there are the few definitions which we talk in the legal metallurgy one is the protection and the other is the transaction because we are from the very beginning we are saying that all type of wing and measuring instruments which are used for any protection or the transaction need to be verified and stamped protection means any wing or measuring instrument which is used for the readings or the observations of that equipment are used for the well-being of any human or a animal or an animal or to protect any commodity vegetation or thing whether individually or collectively if the readings taken up by this instrument like if you see this is a person being machine the reading taken by this person being machine is uh, used by the doctors let's say it is in the hospital and the doctors prescribes that let's say the weight of the patient is constantly reducing or increasing so they used to decide so they used to decide what action has to be taken they used to prescribe the medication over it so these type of wing and measuring instrument like blood pressure meter thermometer a weighing machine which is used anywhere anywhere for the purpose of the protection this legal metallurgy verification is required second is the transaction whether there is any sale purchase exchange or any other purpose or any assessment of royalty all duty or other dues or the assessment of any work done, wages due, or services rendered. In these all cases, the verification of weights and measures is required. Seal and uh, stem, we are all aware with that the, whenever there, we found that this equipment is correct and, and uh, uh, complying the provisions of the law, that it is as per the law, then we can also find that uh, this wing and measuring instrument, this wing and measuring instrument, we used to put a seal put a wire and the seal of this of the government that it's correct and this seal putting a seal stamp or seal is is to just certify that this weight is conforming to the standard specified by or under this act and this mark which was previously made we generally obliterate that 
Another is a verification. Verification is again very important because verification is a legal term. Verification includes calibration. Basically, we are just comparing uh, or a of a commodity or a weight or a measure or any equipment with a standard. That the readings of these these are the two. One is the standard weight and the other is the under test. So we are comparing this under test weight with the standard weight. Then we call this a verification or the calibration. As adjusting or repairing, that is called the verification. That is called under the calibration. Label may be a printed, marked, written, stamped, or graphic matter, which is affixed or appearing upon any prepackaged commodity. It is called a label. I have already discussed. We have decided that few provisions can be declared through the through the electronics through the QR code. We have already discussed this. Now the point is prepackaged commodity. Prepackaged commodity we generally call that uh, a commodity which was filled when the consumer was not present. When the consumer was not present, it means this maybe this packaged commodity may be of sealed nature or a, or an open form. But it is the commodity which is placed inside this prepackaged commodity uh, was filled at the time when the consumer was not present. So it's it's called a prepackaged commodity. Level we have already prescribed, uh, decided, uh, already uh, discussed. And the next is as Dikshisa was telling that this is under section 18, which prescribes for the prepackaged commodities. Section 18.1 prescribes for the declaration part. That what are the declarations required on a prepackaged commodity, without which there is no the prepackaged it is not allowed to sell, distribute, deliver, or uh, uh, expose. For sale, any prepackaged commodity which is not conforming to the requirements of declarations under the, as prescribed under the rules. Second is if we are making any advertisement of a price, that the quantity shall also be declared with this price. How much is the, let's say I'm saying this bottle is of 10 rupees, but how much is the quantity? So quantity needs to be declared. This is section 18. The penal provisions for these packaged commodities are made under section 36.1 and 36.2. 36 1 prescribes for the declaration part. Let's say when we are talking that the declarations are not correct and we are talking that declarations are not made. For example, like the country of origin is not mentioned on a prepackaged commodity. In that case, the first offense can be compounded by 25,000 rupees. And the similar example is not declaration of MRP, not declaration of the name of manufacturer. So these are a few important declarations which need to be made. And if it is not made, first offense can be compounded by 25, paying 25,000 rupees to the government officer. And in the second offense, it is it may be up to 50,000 rupees. Even after if the second after the second offense, the third offense happens, then the compounding can be done in between 50,000 rupees to 1 lakh rupees or the provision of imprisonment for one year is also made. But the point is that uh, if, uh, if an offense is done within three years, then it will be called the second offense. That means if an offense is done today on 10th of Feb 2024 and after three years, that means 2027, after 10th of Feb 2027, if the same offense repeats, that offense will be treated as the first offense. That means the offense done within the within a period of duration of three years is called the first offense. Otherwise, uh, sorry, second offense. Otherwise, after three years, it will be treated as the first offense. Section 36.2 speaks about that uh, short delivery. If the quantity is less, then first offense is compoundable 10,000 to 50,000 rupees. But for the second and subsequent offense, the provision of imprisonment is made with a fine. Uh, this is also very important about the declaration of principal display panel about the uh, decision of about to finalize the principal display panel. As far as legal methodology is concerned, the whole surface area is considered to be the principal display panel. This is the first point. Whole surface area. When you are calculating the surface area for deciding the sizes of the letters and numericals in declarations, the rule under rule 7 of the package commodity rules are clearly specified for that. As for this principal display panel, all the declarations will be made at one place. This is very much required because otherwise it is very difficult to find one declaration at this part, one declaration at this side, and the consumer is just confused to find the declarations. So all prepared information, number one, all information could be grouped together and given at one place. And the second provision speaks that the preprinted information can be given at one place and the online information can be given at the another place. 
This is the most important slide for the prepackaged commodities. And on this presentation, don't worry, will be available maybe by the today evening or by tomorrow. It will be available on all our on all our social media portals as well as I will share it in the uh, groups, WhatsApp groups. Name and address of the manufacturer, packer, and importer. This is most important definition declaration. Obviously, it is required because a consumer who is buying a product he should know who has manufactured it. It is his right to right to know. Country of origin. Again, it is very important. I want to. I don't want to buy a product of a particular country, so I must be informed that from which country this product is imported. Common or generic name of the commodity. Net quantity in standard unit of weight, measure or number of commodity in the package, MRP, inclusive of all taxes, month and year of manufacture, passed before or used by date, month and year, in case of commodity becoming unfit for human consumption with the time, sizes or dimensions of commodity, if relevant, consumer care details, it includes uh, consumer care number, email ID, contact details of the person or the company which can be contacted or connected in case of any complaint. Unit sale price, what as I we, we have already discussed that it is also a very important declaration. The consumer should know what is the price, unit sale price of a prepackaged commodity. For example, as we have already discussed, it will be in terms of kg. Sorry, in terms of up to one kg, it will be in terms of gram, and above one kg, it will be in terms of kg. These are the few declarations which we require on prepackaged commodities, which are being sold through the e-commerce entities. As we are all aware nowadays, many of the commodities are being sold through the e-commerce entity. Then few declarations in the interest of consumer to make an informed choice before deciding or before purchasing. These are the few declarations and uh, you know the legal methodology has framed these uh, rules for e-commerce entities. I think legal methodology was the first one which has framed the rules for the e-commerce entities in India as we were not having any rule and even still now the other departments are planning or trying to frame the rules from the policies for the e-commerce entities but we have made the rules considering that what is the basic requirement whenever you are selling any product on an e-commerce entity on an e-commerce site name and address of manufacturer or importer country of origin if imported common or generic name of commodity net quantity in standard unit of weight measure or number mrp inclusive of all taxes and best before or used by date month and year for a commodity which may become unfit for human consumption so these are the only very few six declarations which are required uh, to be declared on an e-commerce website when the product is sold through the e-commerce sites not all declarations but when the product reaches at the home all declarations are required to be declared or printed on the prepackaged commodity it is mandatory now e-commerce entity these are the few definitions few provisions for e-commerce entity these all these declarations has to be specified except the month and year in which the commodity is manufactured or packed shall be displayed on digital or on the electronic network provided that in case of marketplace model of e-commerce responsibility of correctness of declaration is very important responsibility of correctness of declarations shall lie with the manufacturer or seller or dealer or importer if the entity does not initiate the transmission, select the receiver of transmission or select or modify, etc. So these are the few provisions for the sale through e-commerce websites. This is again very important slide which speaks that what will be the size of the declaration on, the, on a principal display panel of a package commodity. If the size, if we talk about this package commodity, let's say this is a package commodity. I'm just taking the all sizes or um, adding the all surface area of this package commodity. After taking this whole surface area, if it is less than 50 square centimeter, less than 50 square centimeter, the size will be 1 mm if it is printed. But the same size will be 2 mm if it is blown, formed, or molded on surface of container and millimeters. If the size of the area of this uh, principal display panel of a prepackaged commodity lies in between 50 and 100 square centimeters, the size will be 1.5 mm or 
3 mm. So this is the way how sizes are decided. This is how prescribed for more than 2500 square centimeter, it is 6 mm. So depending upon the size of the package, the size of the letters and numericals, numerals are also prescribed. In case of uh, a package commodity in which the size is very small, for example, you have seen many times that this is like, you know, uh, what we call the very small few products on which the declarations cannot be given. So they used to put a, uh, put a tag with it or the, they pack it in a, con in a container or a plastic box or some container where all the declarations can be pasted depending upon the requirements of considering upon the requirements of these declarations of size or the minimum height of numerals and let or letters in the millimeter. These are very important rules uh, under the package commodity that once declare, once declare, the price cannot be changed, cannot be altered by the manufacturer, packer, importer, retailer, anybody, nobody can do that. If once declare means declare. This is one part under section 18.5, sorry, under rule 18.5. Rule 18.2 speaks about the overcharging. Overcharging is not allowed. Once the price is declared, all the sell will sale will be below or up to that MRP. MRP the sale cannot the retail sale price cannot be over and above MRP. It is a violation. Nobody can do that. And the third one is very important. It does not allow the differential prices. Differential prices means the price once declared will be the same. The price of two identical prepackaged commodity cannot be different. The two identical different two identical prepackaged commodities should have the same price. This is one very important point. That means the differential prices of the similar or the identical prepackaged commodities are not allowed under section under rule 18.2a. These are the tolerances for the maximum permissible errors which are allowed or uh, under on the prepackaged commodities. For example, if the Quantity in a package is up to 50 gram or 50 ml. The average, the percentage of declared quantity is 9%. That means up to for the 50 gram or 50 ml, it is 4.5 gram or 4.5 ml. Similarly, if the size is 500 to 100 gram or ml, if the maximum permissible error is 4.5 gram or 4.5 ml. So that means up to 100 ml. If we talk about uh, the 50 or up to the 50 gram or 50 ml, it is 9 gram, 9 percent and from 50 gram to 100 gram or 50 ml to, thank you, 50 ml to 100 ml, it is 4.5 gram, which is directly taken constant value. For 100 to 200 gram or ml, it is 4.5 percent. Similarly, 200 to 300 gram it is 9 gram or 9 ml so this is the way how the uh, how the quantities have been prescribed for example for 15 kg the percentage allowed is 1 percent that means 150 gram the quantity the maximum permissible error of the tolerance is 150 gram for a product which has 15 kg or 15 liter these are the new amendments which have been made recently. Earlier, about uh, 19 commodities were allowed. This is the third bullet. 19 commodities were allowed to be declared uh, to be uh, packed in the prescribed sizes, which have now been removed. And uh, the manufacturer or the packer or the importer can pack in any sizes as per the requirement of the market. However, they have to declare the unit sale price so that the consumer can also compare. The second schedule has been removed, uh, has been omitted. Now the declaration will be for the month and year of manufacture as we have already explained that earlier it was all allowed, importer, pack, etc. But it is not allowed now. And uh, the last and the very important is the MRP has to be declared in terms of the Indian currency. Rounding off provision you can has been removed because we generally use it the rounding off. And now we only have the 50 pesa coin. So it is not required to be mentioned over here. The prices are declared by the manufacturer or the packer themselves. So we do not have any control on the declaration of the price. For this unit sale price, the provision is very clear, very simple. It is has to be rounded off to the nearest two decimal places. 
nearest two decimal places. For the rounding off, the rules for rounding off will be applicable. For example, if it is more than five, the last digit will be added, added by one or increased by one. If it is less than four, we will leave it. So this is the way how the rounding off rules will be applicable. Per gram, when net quantity is less than one kilogram, and per kilogram, when net quantity is more than one kilogram. Per centimeter, when the length is less than one meter, and per meter, when length is more than one meter. Per milliliter, when the volume is one less than one liter, and per liter, when volume is more than one liter. Per number or unit, if any item is sold by number or unit. Provided that the, for the packages, so these are the way, ways by which the unit sale price will be declared. Now the point is how the whether there is a there is an exemption clause. Exemption says that for the alcoholic beverages or species liquor, the state excise laws and the rules made there under shall be applicable within the state in which it is manufactured. Suppose the excise laws and the rules are not available or applicable, then in that case, these packaged commodities rules shall be applicable. Further, if the unit sale price not be declared, if it is equal to the retail sale price, that means we are having a commodity which is 1 kg or 1 litre. So, 1 litre price or per price per litre is the same. So, there is no need to declare the price in terms of when the retail sale price is equal to the unit sale price. So, this is the with these are the few declarations which we have amendments which we have made. Now, there was a problem with the industries that uh, there were a large number of cases when they were declaring the quantity which was not in terms of mass or volume. It was in terms of number, set, pair, pieces like that. So, we have just allowed that any of the, that type of words are allowed. You may use by number, by the number or unit or piece or pair or sort or set or such other word which represent the quantity in the retail in the package may be mentioned. Now, rule 18.7, where under this, earlier it was VAT, we have now put it GST. We have also omitted the rule 33.2, which was having the, which was prescribing for permission to pack the package commodities in a size which is not prescribed under the second schedule. As the second schedule has been omitted, there is no need to continue with this particular provision of rule. Under this rule 6, we have made for the electronic products that what not need to be declared. Now declare the name of the manufacturer, packer or importer on the package itself. Now, earlier that whole address name and address of the manufacturer packer for the electronic product has to be declared on the package. Under this exemption clause, we have allowed that name of will be declared, name of the manufacturer or packer will be declared on the package. However, address and other declarations or the details can be given, can be provided through the QR code. The generic or the common name can be provided through the QR code. The sizes and dimension of the commodity can be prescribed, can be decided, can be given through the QR code. Telephone number and email ID has to be given on the package of an electronic product. Rest of the declarations can be given through the QR code. So this is the way how the QR code provision was made for the electronic product. And this is only when the product, when the declarations are not made on the package itself. If the declarations are made on the package, then there is no need to declare them this declaration this make to there's no need to make these declarations through QR code. However, it is up to the manufacturer or the packer or the importer that he is giving the declarations on the package as well as through the QR code, it is allowed. He can do that. It is an additional information or way of additional information which can always be used. It is a very important point, very good thing. Very important uh, exemption was given to the government or the hygiene industry which are selling in loose or open. They have been exempted from package commodity zones at the point of sale. If consumer can inspect the product before buying, such product shall be at. But there are very few declarations which have to be made in the interest of consumer. Name and address of the manufacturer or marketer or the brand owner or the importer with country of origin or manufacture in case of imported products. Consumer care email ID and phone number, size in metric notation in terms of meter, centimeter, etc. With inter maybe or may not be with internationally recognizable sizes, indicators such as SML, etc. Maximum retail price, inclusive of all taxes in India, in Indian currency. These are the only very few four declarations which we are asking for the package for the garment or hygiene items which are being sold in loose or open. This came into force from 1st of January 2023 and it is in force, there is no problem at all. Exemption shall apply to sale of finished products alone. 
all information shall be displayed on e-commerce website if sold through e-commerce sites. Any manufacturer, packer, or importer can may declare the above information if he wish to declare with immediate effect. So at the time it was made. The provision that uh, because you know, the many times the manufacturers or the packers wish to declare these informations immediately. So the rules allow them so that there should not be any problem in later course of time when they are declaring uh, due to the law. We have already discussed that section 49 prescribe a provision that a company can nominate a director for the violation or for the offense of a company or other persons if the violation is done by a unit or the establishment different persons can be nominated uh, very few definitions we have made new definitions we have added because at the time when we were implementing this unit sale price it was very difficult for those packages which were not a simple single type of package and that's why this unit sale price was implemented maybe after one and a half year when it was supposed to be implemented these are the few definitions that we have allowed that for these combination packages, group packages, and multi-piece packages, for these three types of packages, the declaration of unit sale price is not required. For these declaration, these complement packages are those packages which are basically dissimilar commodities, dissimilar packages. For example, cups, napkins, or like knives, forks, etc. There is no you know similarity. These two, let's say, common plate. This cup and plate, we are packing it. So these two cannot be the same product. These are the two different products. And if we, the package has this type of products, maybe a, a toy a package in which different different, pack, or different different components have been packed, but these are different components do not, cannot be given the price in terms of per unit price. So where there's no possibility in case of combination package, there's no need to declare the unit sale price. Group package, identical, similar, but not identical. That means, the product is same, like a sponge is the sponge, but it is of different different sizes. These are the group packages. Two sponge this, one sponge this, four sponge this, like it's a group package. Package containing the assorted biscuits, containing similar commodities of different brands, multi-piece package, exactly the same. Five toilet soaps of net weight 20 gram each, and total net weight is 100 gram. It is a multi-piece package. But in all these cases, it has been allowed that there is no need to declare the unit sale price. Declaration of month and year of manufacture for all products sold in the country. This is also very important that now month and year of manufacture has to be declared only whether it is imported or manufactured or packed. The earlier provision of declaration of in place of month and year of manufacture, uh, it was allowed to declare import or pack has been omitted and it is in the interest of consumers because many times it is observed that a product was manufactured long back or it was packed recently or imported recently. Flexibility given to declare month and year of manufacture anywhere on the retail package because earlier as a lot of other in place of month and year of manufacture other provisions were also allowed so that was required to be declared at one place but now it has to be declared on one place uh, so it can be declared at any place on the package. This has flexibility has been given. Declaration in a visible or clear manner. Exemption given to spare, spare parts and accessories provided they are used for the purpose of servicing with a warranty. This month and year of manufacture is not required to be declared on spare parts or accessories which a service center put in an equipment with a warranty. That this particular part, month and year of manufacture is not required. This particular part I am restoring, I am replacing in your device, maybe a computer, maybe a laptop, maybe a mobile. And the warranty of this part and the machine is, let's say, one year. So for one year, when warranty is given, the contract is with the warranty, not with the month and year of manufacture. And what will be the spare parts and accessories that have also been prescribed under the rules that it shall include any part, this, uh, these, uh, some spare parts and accessories. It will include any part, component, or accessories that are complementary to the main or core product of a machine, device, or equipment by whether name, whatever name called, including parts that are sold separately for use in support or replacement of a damaged or worn part in order to have intended operation or function of the functioning of the machine, device, or equipment. So this may be anything, part, component, accessory, which is complementary to main or core product of the machine, device, it can be considered as the spare parts and or accessories. 
if the loose commodities are sold through the e-commerce website then or e-commerce channels then there are some declarations which have to be made on e-commerce websites for example name and address of manufacturer or packer or importer it may be manufacturer marketer land owner importer seller with the country of origin or manufacturer in case of imported products consumer care email id and phone number retail sale price with inclusive of all taxes in indian currency net quantity in terms of standard unit of weight measure or number basically large number of uh, products were available on these uh, on these e-commerce websites which were not having any declaration and they were selling in terms of the open or the loose part loose commodities so it was decided that in the interest of consumers and in the interest of industry because otherwise when you're going in the market you know a lot of things as you are not aware about these when you are buying something from the online market online websites so it was decided that in place of giving this uh, at least four declarations need to be made on these prepackaged commodities we have recently issued the advisories as we always called that when you are whenever you are going to uh, take the petrol or the diesel we used to say that kindly ensure zero before delivery and the the shop the seller or the delivery boy also ask the same thing but at the same time considering that the consumer is aware of that because consumer is doing consumer is exercising all the cares all the rights or the past which are given to the consumer even after the government also works for that and that's why we have allowed we have asked the manufacturers and the oil companies to use only the magnetic self-destructive non-openable potted pulsar we have started e-sealing we have the provision of otp for calibration or change of any part or hardware or software family integrity is there in all parts in logic cars pulsar etc no part can be replaced without having when it is not having the family integrity and there is an end-to-end -end encryption between all logic cars boards with microcontroller chips so that the it can communicate it cannot communicate without having an encryption it will only communicate with the, those parts with which it has the encryption we have also issued a large number of advisories time to time uh, for the industries as uh, i have just discussed to prominently display all mandatory information required under the legal methodology rules and act at one place declaration of uh, foreign country's name mandated under the law should be in full form and no abbreviation or shortened form whatever should be used make a provision on the e-commerce website so that sellers should not be able to upload their products if all the mandatory information are not displayed by them giving wrong information is the responsibility of the seller but to provide a provision that by putting that particular of by filling all the columns the product cannot be uploaded is the responsibility of the website of the e-commerce websites because as we are filling a form and as you put a detail in a particular form it cannot move further so the similar way they can have they should have to make a provision in their websites for non-compliance of provisions of act and rules for prepackaged commodities various notices have been issued compounding is being done if there is no compounding the court cases are being put in the court of law also issued notices for violation of wing and managing provisions of wing and managing instrument there are large number of complaints that wing machines are being sold on the e-commerce sites without verification we are taking strict action against them and if the compounding fees and of the verification fees will not be deposited certainly they will be will be in these all cases will be put in the code of law as a, in a as a criminal offense because it's a it's a loss to the government exchequer as well as those manufacturers who are actually uh, paying all the fees and now they are not able to uh, they are not able to compete the market because of these uh, importers or few of the sellers who are not verifying who are not paying the fees to the government who is not complying the provisions of law so strict actions are being taken against them and we are continuing them in considering the considering that or to safeguard the interest of our own indian domestic manufacturers who are complying all provisions of law so these are the few things few cases which we are doing large number of advisories are regularly issued even after many things we are considering that how best we can do and we used to interact with the industries many of the industries maybe that all of the industries or all of the associations are not in touch with us 
Even after we used to try that before taking any decision, before issuing any rule, before making any framing any rule, we used to put it on the website of the department. However, it many times it is not being seen by everybody. And now from the very next time, we can also put it on our portals so that the consumers or the industries or the stakeholders can sorry can put their comments what should be done and what is not required to be done. So these are the few uh, things or few uh, discussions about the legal methodology which we are doing in India, apart from the very good things which we are developing, like we are planning to have a national portal. As uh, I told, uh, we dis were discussing, it was decided or it was con uh, considered during the under uh, Dikshi sir, that we should have a national portal for all legal methodology applications. As in India, as at central level, all the four applications or the four services which are providing, which we are providing to the industry are online. We do not take any application offline, all are online. And it is very easy for us also otherwise at that time to read the document to scan the document to prepare a certificate was difficult nowadays it is very easy as soon as we just examine that it is correct even it is a certificate can be generated and now we are in a position because the time is 15 days that we have to issue a verification sorry we have to issue a registration certificate or a certificate of nomination of a director or weighing or amazing instrument manufacturer on approval at least 15 days time we generally consider to issue the certificate after receiving all the details all the reports etc even after we observe that within five days it is not more than five days within five working days generally the certificates are being issued and uploaded on the website however we are trying to, uh, we are trying to reduce it certainly it is reduced obviously it is very less i'm saying even 15 or five days is more it generally we used to get it done within a day within a day but the time is 15 days and and we are trying to continue that at least maximum within 15 days the exercise should be completed and the industry should not face any problem due to uh, the delay in issuing the certificates so and uh, these all activities are online nsws.gov.in packer registration can be done on this nsws.gov.in approval of model the applicant can apply and for oml approval certificates right now we have not started online and i'm not thinking that we should start for online because at international level also the application is being taken uh, individually fees is being taken individually however we have decided the fees uh, we are i'm not thinking that we are going we're not thinking to put this fees in the public domain when the international participant will ask us because this fees is fixed so we cannot we are not going to change the fees until unless it is decided by at the very high level this fees we will charge how we are not going to put it in the public domain and wherever required wherever possible we can change the we can revise we can reduce or increase the fees if possible or if required otherwise we are ready to issue the oil approval certificates and we are expecting that by the end of this month 29th of feb few of the oil approval certificates will be issued at the same time we, we are also planning to have the dissemination of instant time. The national portal for the legal methodology will also be developed within three days. Few of the services all over the country, we will start through this portal. The, the portals of the state government will continue. As Apart from that, the state government portal, there will be a central portal. The application can be submitted either at the state portal or the central portal. It will directly go to the concerned officer wherever possible through the APIs. So we are working in the legal methodology so that the working or the functioning can be improved. It can be fast and it can be uh, it can be transparent. The person can understand where we are or my application is and where it is lacking. However, Andreas is not complying all the provisions of all the provisions. He's not giving all the information, all the declarations. Certainly, it will not be done. But wherever possible it can be the time the delay can be reduced so this is the way how the legal methodology in the country is working all the state governments are already having their portals they are taking most of the applications through their portals the registrations the the licenses are being issued there i'm not getting any type of problem i'm not listening that there is a problem in issuing of license or issuing of certificates i'm not uh, observing any problem since last many few minutes last many years however we want to improve this and we want to continue the improvement which is always a never-ending process even uh, if somebody has any of the advice everybody is welcome uh, this is I think enough yeah this is enough and uh, thank you very much for this uh, uh, yeah I just remove this now so the Ronak, now this uh, part is over from our side and you can make the participants uh, uh, the panelist so that we can yeah we can uh, have this few of the pictures to upload on our social media portals in the meantime we can discuss few of the questions we can take the questions which are given in the portal sir would you like to speak anything 
You got to be on mute. Sir, you are on mute. No, no, still, we are not able to hear you, sir. You are on mute. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. I think you can hear me now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the topic, uh, for some reasons, like you said, um, you couldn't link up with the uh, resource person. Uh, what we've had to do is, is really loaded uh, for a reason that uh, prepackaged commodity is a major component in legal metrology activities. And um, somehow it's something we've been, we've been trying to deal on. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, information has been put out in your in your presentation today, which is going to be very helpful uh, for reason that um, our you know I talked about our enactment the, the act we are having. We actually have um, all only the union list is the exclusive list. Only the federal government here can um, carry out activities as it relates to legal methodology. You know the the standardization and the enforcement itself, everything is within the purview of the exclusive list. Um, our acts, as I mentioned some weeks back we were in the process and we actually got it through a, a national assembly, but for some reason it could not be signed. So oh. we are coming up, yeah, very soon, hopefully we'll have an act that will capture a lot of these um, areas you've talked about. You know, in your intro, where we talked about uh, um, we talked about uh, transaction and protection, which is very important. It gives a wider scope of our activity because we've been having issues with, you know, they try to tie legal methodology to transaction alone. We tell it's only trade, but in fairness, we know it's way, way beyond that. We're talking of health, talking of environment, and what have you. And from this prepackaged um, aspect you've come up with, we were trying to actually work on it. Because oh. looking at what you have, you know, there's an additional function you carry out there that is not within our scope. One beautiful thing is that your MRP, you know, it's very, very important. Uh, I wish we could introduce it in our system. It actually helps fairness in street. Because here you could just walk down the street and you see when you don't have the MRP, you have charges within the roof. But some of these um, things have been mentioned. I believe we can have them come in in our regulations, you know, as an offshoot of the act. If we have the act in place, which I believe should be done in a few months, uh, we'll be able to get some of this um, innovation into, into our regulation to help us in the area of our pre packages. You know, we'll be able to enforce the laws as they are and expand. I mean, it's, it's, it's the best thing that can happen to any market. We need to have a very, very robust uh, prepackaged uh, commodity structure in place. So I want to thank you for this particular um, lecture. Uh, we, we've talked about this before, you know, prepackages, and for some reasons, we've not been able to meet up, you know, getting this information across to our office. I believe um, in time to come, uh, we'll get something on that. And for this one, I'm going to do what I'll call a peer review because there are quite a lot of things that you have there. That we seem to have, but not well streamlined. So, your note today, which I know I'll receive later, I'll have to put it out, begin to sort out those places that will be of real benefit to us. So, that when we begin to put our regulations in place and some level of enforcement that we have going on now, because in the next couple of weeks, also rule out some guidelines for our officers you know, to work with. This will equally help us in doing it. So I want to thank you very much for this um, wonderful presentation. It was thank an accidental presentation anyway, but it was good. And thank you. Thank you. Your, your, your former director also, he, he did he, he, he made a lot of highlights. Put him on pick because I was trying to get my smartphone along and he made some very salient points, especially in the area of the ecology and weights and measures, how you you know were able to come and match them together and know you know why setting um uh, are applicable you know, yeah. so i want to thank you very much and your other participants as well i thank you very much hope to continue to benefit so much from these interactions thank you sir thank you very much sir and sir we are always here help support you wherever you need in terms of uh, the strengthening of the legal methodology system 
in your country we can wherever possible we will support you whether it is an equipment part or whether it is a transition with the uh, this are act and rules or some uh, some standards some framing of rules wherever you need our help we are always available for any type of training even sir now in march we are organizing this uh, uh, this uh, OM, international oml cs management committee meeting in india and i don't know whether you uh, you are attending it or not in month in the month of march 5th, 6th and 7th of March, we are organizing this OML CS meeting in India, in Delhi. So, uh, if you can think of it and uh, kindly uh, seek with your, uh, in your system government, what best you can do. And if, if you want to participate, you are most welcome. Okay, we'll look at that. I know somebody mentioned it in one of the platform about the bits. So we're you. having our own issues trying to sort out some of our program here. So Thank we'll you. We'll take a look at it. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So now, sir, there are a few questions. We just take a few of the questions. Uh, somebody has shared the screen. Kindly stop sharing your screen. P. Shapi. P. Shubha. Shubhana Ben. Shubhana Ben P. Kindly share your screen, please. So, sir, there are a few questions. One is, it is required to write inclusive of all taxes for USP? No. There is no need of USP because you cannot declare that it is with, a, with a all uh, inclusive of all taxes. That is for the MRP. In USP, unit sale price, we just have asked to declare the unit sale price. What is the correct way to write net quantity or net weight? We have already discussed. You can declare anything. There is no problem. How to write 2 kg, 2 into 1 kg or 2 kg, 2 number into 1 kg. No, this is not required. 2 kg is enough. There is no need to put in bracket 2 into 1 kg. There is no requirement of law. Is there any correct format for declaring month and year of manufacture? See, there is no format of, at all for this because you have to declare MM, oblique, YY, YY. Again, uh, Shubhna Bain, your slides are being shared. Please stop this sharing. Shubhna Bain, somebody is sharing the slides. Sorry, sorry, sir. Please unshare it. From where can we find the advisory which you mentioned? Okay, what we will do, we will put all the advisories, advisories we have issued in the last two, three years, we will put it on the website. Can we have PDP in a package? Many PD, can we have many PDP? See, PDP is the principal display panel, and the principal display panel is the area, the complete surface area of this package is known as the principal display panel. So this is only one. You cannot say that this this is. So you can have the stickers. You can have you can stay paste the label. That is different. Label is different. Sticker is different. Principal display panel is a complete surface area. So it will be only one. Yes, for joining the group, you and my mobile number was mentioned in the slide. Or I will share uh, today. I will share it again in all portals. This video will also be uh, also be available as well as the presentation will be in the slides. So you just send me a WhatsApp message. I will put in the group. Yeah, PDP is the principal display panel. That is the total surface area on which the declarations can be made. My request is somebody has shared the uh, his mobile number. Kindly share me. Kindly send me a WhatsApp message. It will be easy for me. Electronic products like refrigerator, AC, etc., are allowed to display certain information through our through QR code. Yes, whatsoever the electronic products are there, they can declare few of the declarations through QR code, which we have already discussed. That is, name will be given on the package, address can be given through QR code, mobile number, sorry, phone number, and the email ID on the package, but the address can be given, name and address of the person can be given through the QR code. So these are the few declarations which can be given through the QR codes. In the manufacturing unit, required to take LM, Calibration certificate of each equipment or only equipment comes contact at the finished product. My request to all the industries is kindly take the verification certificate for all equipments. Because my personal experience when I observe in few of the industries, the equipments are not correct. And that not only uh, the produces or manufactures the wrong products, but at the same time, diminish the image or brand name of the manufacturer. So my request is at least 
get because the fees is very small the verification fees is just in terms of 100 200 rupees like that so my request is kindly get at least first time verification whether it is mandatory or not it's a different issue but you have a certificate and you have a confidence that equipment is correct secondly at least once in a year your equipment will be repaired will be cleaned and this will be working correctly so my request is kindly get it done at least once in a year Is it required to write inclusive of all taxes? No, I have already told that USP for USP, there is no need to declare the. Yes. Are LM rules applicable for exporting? For export purpose, the legal methodology rules are not applicable, but my request is kindly get it checked from the legal methodology because when it enters into the other countries and our products are not correct it basically you know what happens it 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 makes a bad image for the country so the product should be correct declaration part should be correct whether it is required or not that's a different issue but you should take the help of the legal methodology whether at the central level or the state level the product which we are exporting is 100 percent correct that is my request whether it is mandatory or not forget about the mandatory but when my product which is anywhere in the world that is the best product we should have this type of tendency or to have to grow now again as the honorable prime minister is working that we have to grow we have to develop make in india make in india we have to say yes the products are having the you know credibility credibility uh, for the credibility credibility it will be good otherwise for as per the law it is not required 8.1 of PC rules, the space required is only around the numeral or complete net quantity declaration. See, it is as per the declaration, it is with the net quantities. Let's say 200 gram. So within 200, how much will be the gap? Left side, right side, opposite, and down, up and down. And it will be in between the gram. So it is mentioned over there and you can do that. It's one time job. Uh, just go once the rule and if there is any problem, you can contact any of the legal methodology officer nearby to you in the state or at the central level. There is no problem. We will help you out if there is any doubt best before or used by date or expiry date or used by date fsc fssai required is expiry date or used by date for food actually it depends in many cases i think both of them are allowed but my request is i am not an expert of food safety and standards authority uh, food safety and standards act 2006 so my request is you kindly go through the act or take the advice from the fssi next time we will be having an expert from fssi very soon you can ask these questions from him Hotels are not covered about MRP. Yes, it is a good point. Actually, this is the order of the Honorable Supreme Court that uh, you are not going to buy a package of water bottle. You are also enjoying the ambience. So, uh, up to some extent, uh, that may be correct. And I'm not here to comment on the orders of given by the Honorable Supreme Court. As the burden of proof lies with us, how can we prove if? How can we prove if after notice on online violation, he corrects it? So, but of proof means uh, I don't know uh, what you want to say. If I am an officer and uh, when my officer sends a notice to for this e-commerce websites, we used to take the photographs or the photo snap at that time with the with the, with this hash code. And whenever required, we can always prove in the court of law that this was the product at the time. We have the printout, we have the soft copy, everything is available with us. So we can always prove in the court of law that it was the same picture taken at that time without any tampering. That is hash code uh, proof is there and if you need any help uh, from any point of time we can help you out we used to do that is there any time limit or restriction provided in the rule to print these declarations through qr code on electronic no there is no time limit limit it is it has already in force my request is again somebody is sending me the whatsapp number kindly send me on my whatsapp your name your name your organization and place so that i can put i can add you in the whatsapp group it is difficult for me to take the number and add please is lm certificate required for b2b food business see food basically the packaged commodities rule under rule 3 are not applicable for industrial or the institutional consumers so if you fall under the institutional and the industrial consumers then they are not allowed or what you can do if it is not allowed then the whole rule whole set of rule is not allowed there is no need for the registration Allergen dispenser is already approved by OML in France. 
how much it will take to get model approval in India. You have to apply online on this. Again, Ms. Ripu Daman, you have uh, shared this, your screen, please remove it. Ripu Daman, your screen is viewing, please, uh, please unshare. For OML approval, you can directly apply online, submit all the details, and then it will be done online if there is no need to go for the testing or some another something to be just have the physical check, then it will be done. And it will not take more time. About uh, unit sale price. Unit sale price is basically, it is the mathematical calculation. Let's say this water bottle of 500 ml, let's say its cost is uh, 500 pesa. So the cost one grill ml is one pesa, like that. This is the mathematical calculation. We are not going to check how much was the cost price, how much was the selling price, like that. Nothing. Only the MRP declared by the net quantity. This is the per gram or per ml quantity. Is seal is not visibility at equipment? What should be alternate option? See, if the seal is not there, don't worry. This is not your problem. This is a problem of the legal methodology. We can put the paper seal. We can do any other option. All the options are available with us. Don't worry. Again, uh, number, I'm sorry, I'm not taking your number. Lab balance requires stamping. Analytical balance to micro balance. Very good point. See, the lab balances which are used for which purpose? You have to see. If they are used for any transition or protection, then only required. Otherwise, it is not required for any transition or protection if they are not used. For e commerce, date of manufacture and use by is not required, but LM stage it requires use by date to be given except for manufacture date. Please give clarity. Actually, we have made that uh, month and year of manufacture is not required. However, the month and year of uh, the date of the date of expiry date or the use by date is need to be required if a product becomes unfit for human consumption. If the product becomes unfit for human consumption. I'm sorry, I'm not adding, taking any number. You kindly send me the WhatsApp separately, please. Honorable High Court ordered that if any of the declaration is not present, uh, not present anywhere on PDB, only violation of the rule will be attracted, not section 36.1. I'm not aware of that particular uh, order. You kindly share it to me. Otherwise, the, maybe the Karnataka government has already made an appeal or if it is not, we will just go through it, check it and then we'll come back to you. I'm not aware of the complete order, what the order actually says and what was the point of discussion or the, uh, or the remedy asked by the applicant from the Honorable Court of Law. So these are the few things. All the amendments are available on the website. So what the amendments are made, all the notifications are available. However, and we are just uh, some few, few of the state governments and send me the correcting with this all. I'm uh, taking all the amendments in one book. We are also doing it and maybe very soon we will again put the complete package from the rules with all amendments made so far. So these are the few of the things which uh, we wanted to discuss with you. But I think it is a very good exercise. And if you need any help at any point of time from the legal methodology, we are always available the industry to grow. With this, I would like to thank all the participants. If anybody wish to speak anything, he or she is free to speak or to make any comment or to uh, add something, you are free. Otherwise, we can. We are closing this workshop next week at the same time at 11 o'clock. We will again meet. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.